Good afternoon or good evening or even good morning, doctors. Some of you who are in the East Coast or West Coast, my name is Dr. Atai. I know that uh, some of you have been anxiously waiting to hear about our next level of applications that we can use. I know that some of you are aware of what we are going to be talking about when it's about the effects of high frequency, as well as talking about the MOPS. So high frequency uh, vibration, uh, we want to talk about the efficacy, whether or not it's something that's applicable in the GP practice. Uh, again, my name is Dr. Tai, and I've used these products in evaluating and uh, have multiple sponsorships from Propel, and this presentation is brought to you by Propel. And just so you know, those of you who are aware of my past 11 years of the ortho background as GP, uh, clear aligners have been my passion. It's really helped my practice to grow. And most importantly, it's been able to be something that I can offer to my patients seamlessly when it comes to uh, tracking, on the other hand, and having the appliances um, at a position where let's not have any hiccups. Uh, Propel has really helped getting me to that next level. Uh, Propel's introduction with the mops and um, having my practice kind of grow and introducing it to every staff member that comes in and every new team member that comes in, understanding the verbiage. And I am in Laguna Hills. I practice in South Orange County and uh, obviously a lot of competition that uh, is around us. But to me, it's not a competition when you are able to communicate well with your patients and you are able to deliver the best application of your uh, consult and treatment plan without any hiccups. So those of you who are aware of what is going on in the dental industry, as you know, clear liner treatments has been on the rise. And uh, we want to talk a little bit more about um, other auxiliaries, other multidisciplinary practicing of dentistry, uh, not just necessarily clear aligners, uh, implants, uh, or maybe even uh, full mouth reconstructions, or just uh, sleep appliances that you hear, talking about the application of uh, having these patients who are going through just holding their bite stabilization. Um, and those of you who are aware of the communication of my uh, practice with some of you doctors who called and said, well, what do we use? How do we use it? Um, as you know, the active treatment versus the kind of passive or as I like to call the aligner seating uh, retention treatment are all part of a protocol that we all need to make sure we have. So. Let's first begin of the contents and agenda. Uh, my agenda today would be talking about um, the different applications of the aligner seating uh, improvements of high frequency uh, uh, vibration that's in the marketplace right now, as well as the benefits. Um, you know, what are the benefits? Why do we even need to use this type of product and I will give you a little bit of history of MOPS. Those of you who already know about uh, the, the microosseous perforations will touch on that. But let's talk about the idea of the bone remodeling and bone density and whether or not there's any effects or efficacy of this um, high frequency versus other types of products. So uh, let, without uh, wasting your time, let's just go forward with the understanding that we know that the most uh, use that uh, that you have uh, done with the mops is, you know, the microosseous perforation hitting the uh, bone, if you will, creating that uh, microosseous perforation, allowing the um, teeth to get that cytokine activity, making sure that the biology of the tooth is ready for force when there's force added to it, teeth can move better. I always explain it to my patients. I always tell them the first time you see me when I, this is prior to me starting their orthodontic treatment with clear aligners. I tell them before you, you, you start, uh, let me tell you what you're going to exp experience next visit. And they say, what's that? I go, well, you're not going to like me so much. They're like, why? I go, well, we're going to, we're going to put jackets on your teeth. They're like jackets on my teeth. What is that? Well, those are the attachments or engagers or little buttons that we put on your teeth to help hold the aligner in place and help move those teeth. Okay, they get that. And they say, say next, 
we're going to go ahead and add, put them on a diet. Sometimes we have to maybe add a little IPR or into approximation or your teeth have been fat for too long. We may need to kind of get them in position where they can go past each other and we use a light sandpaper to get that done in between the teeth. They say, okay. Then comes the third part where we want to wake up your bone. Your teeth have been sleeping. Your bone has been excited to be in that position for a very long time. We want to move that position of the teeth so your bone needs to wake up. So we're going to start creating little dimples on your bone. We're going to tap the bone. We're going to create a little uh, tapping and we use an instrument, uh, a motorized version uh, that, you, that you all see the picture of today. Uh, kind of go in there and just wake the bone up. And that kind of sets the tone of what they're going to expect. And I say, look, you don't need to do this more than maybe one time. And at that, at, at moving forward, we're going to go ahead and, and add this little uh, vibration. And we're going to continue that stimulation of your bone, continue the movement of your uh, teeth to a position that once we're happy with, it's going to be stabilized. And to stabilize it, we're going to have to make sure that your teeth are always in the right position. And your bone is always on this active, pronounced, strong, physical. And as I kind of go through this to the patient, they kind of get it like, okay, 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 fine, fine, fine. And that's the reason why I'm here with you today. Because when I first started with um, using the Propel products, it was about MOPS. It was talking about accelerating your treatment. And at that time, if you recall, the aligner change was every two weeks. There wasn't really any biology that was introduced about um, maybe cytokine activity. There wasn't really any kind of research that was done, or at least that I knew of, of can we actually help aligners track better. It was always about putting on attachments or engagers or dimples on the teeth. Maybe we, we have to put dimples on the aligner. Maybe the aligner thickness has an effect. And sometimes if the teeth didn't track, let's go ahead and wait on three weeks on that patient with the aligner. And that was really the wrong thing because now as research starts to come out, and my, my experience was it has nothing really to do with how long the patient's wearing the tray. If the tray is engaging and the force is built in the tray, whether it's 0.25 millimeter per aligner or 0.30 per aligner, then at that point, that tooth is going to move into the position of where the treatment plan was supposed to go, given that the bone cooperates. Otherwise, what you're doing is putting a lot of force. The plastic gives, no real root resorption, but the plastic gives and the plastic doesn't rotate the teeth. And we end up having an issue with tracking. So at that time, I'm going back as early as 2015, 2013, 2012 timeline, the tracking was a big issue. So accelerating the treatment was a big conversation. As I used MOPS, as I went through and did the uh, manual and microosseous perforation, and as you can see on the top of the screen, you know, we'll, we'll kind of get deeper in these cases where you see the little red dimples there on the gum line, interproximal in between the gingival tissue, attached tissue. I noticed that post-treatment, four or five years later, the bone was actually, it looked in my cone beam, a little more dense. Now, is it possible that once you put teeth in better position, that malocclusion or that ab fraction that was happening in the teeth, the unwanted stress on the bone was creating the bone not to be so dense because the patient was malocluded and now we got him in better occlusion? Or was it because we might have added some mops or added some biology where now the teeth can be in a position where the bone has been in much, as you would call the osteogenesis um, uh, of it, a lot better and can we ha have it to stable? Well, to prove that point, and uh, uh, in Dentistry Today, the article that was uh, published when I showed my case where I was giving the patient an implant on tooth number 19, at the same time, I was moving teeth. And we, mo we created mops within a six millimeter distance of each other. And it showed that the follow-up four years later, that we were able to show a stronger, better bone post mops with these patients than the ones without. That was a pretty big finding for me because looking at the patient in you see in the pre-op and going to the next level during treatment. And as you can see, we had a little bit of tracking, but to me, this osteotosis bone, this heavy bone area, very dense bone area 
it is going to be a problem for these patients for final follow-up. So my biggest issue was, is it possible that we can now remove the idea of the dimpling, remove the idea of poking these patients and maybe add something different, okay? And now look at, let's go to the next level. Now, is it possible that you un, uh, uh, misunderstood the idea of MOPS? Well, in the past three years, they, a lot of doctors have asked me questions that, um, well, I create a hole and you know, no, no problem. And, and that hole starts to close up and we're good. No, it's not about creating a hole. It's really actually creating a, a compressive strength, a, a stress on the bone. And that compressive stress allows the little micro fractures and that radiating micro fractures allows the, the osteoplastic, osteoblastic and the biology and the bone chemistry to actually work for us as we start to add stress or pressure on the teeth for it to move. So we're actually changing the bone chemistry when you create this kind of micro osseous perforation or minor trauma. Now, when I introduced and I was talked to about high frequency vibration, the idea was, look, I don't think it's gonna work. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure if this is gonna work. So I started using it as an aligner seeder. Okay, is it gonna help my patients? So first I started without any kind of aligners in the patient's mouth. Let's go ahead and just do patients with or without the aligner in the, in the teeth. Let's just see what it looks like on the bone. I'll take my cone beam. If I'm doing an implant, let's do those cases to see if actual vibration works on the bone and changing the chemistry of the bone, maybe making it a little bit um, better for me to work with. Then later on, we took another group of patients and we started having them with clear aligners uh, in their mouth. And we noticed that the clear liner obviously fit better. We were able to have them change maybe three to five days. So if the aligner is fitting better, teeth are gripped and teeth are moving as long as the bone is cooperating. And it looked like it was moving along fine and the cone beams came out okay. Just five minutes a day of just doing the V-Pro. And in my office, the conversation was, well, my associate said, look, Dr. Tai, I don't know if there's really any science behind this. I said, look, I don't know if there's any science or not we can start digging into it. But what I'm noticing is when patients are actually getting the aligner seated better, 100% teeth are moving, and patients who've had some sort of pain, like I've, I, you know, we also do some wire and brackets. I have an orthodontist that comes in my practice and he does the wire and brackets and patients have sometimes pain. We give them this um, vibration and five minutes a day and they feel as if their pain is much less so it's helping the pain get reduced. Okay, that sounds great, but what's the biology behind it? So in looking and digging, um, I was given some information that I wanted to share. Number one was that the idea of vibration and bone biology, it's been studied for, for some time now. And the reality is that the bone cells, um, they, they tend to have a little bit more response to higher frequency. So the best I can tell you is take some water, put some music to it, and the water vibrates. Is that really what we're talking about? Well, let's talk a little bit deeper. When you start to look about the um, responsiveness of high frequency, and we're going to go into uh, uh, some of the research that was actually done in the 40s, like in the 40s, uh, was talking about the dental pulp because some of these um, um, naval officers were obviously in a uh, submarine and they were trying to figure out if the idea of, of teeth and vibration has anything to do with bone and why they started this whole conversation and then they were talking about pulp was because in rats and they started to look at the periosteum and they started to notice that there's change in that chemistry including some of the officers that were in the uh, submarine for a while and this vibration uh, continued. And the, there was more research that was given to me regarding the actual bone development that they actually were able to get stronger, better bone in rats in, in the early 70s by just creating uh, this, this high frequency vibration in the rats. And even talking about the increasing frequency of vibration and the response of bone, where even NASA had some research publications and all of these publications 
uh, as I kind of went through it, um, I said, you know what, let me put it together. And it was about 10 years of investigation that was done on unpublished peer-reviewed documents of vibration, high frequency, low frequency, different types of frequencies on bone. And I decided, you know what, instead of sharing all that, maybe you can contact your local rep. All of this has been, uh, been uh, all the Propel reps pretty much should have them. You can get the full studies and read on it to get an idea of what has happened adding the vibration into the processes that we have in our dentistry every day. Okay, so are all vibrations the same? Well, no, because the idea of frequency and different results have, are, are apparent in these studies. So for instance, one of the things I wanted to make sure you understand is that the idea of higher frequency has more cellular response, right? So the higher the frequency, the higher the vibration, the cellular response is actually a little bit more responsive. So when you start to talk about frequency and what happens on the alveolar bone, we're, we're gonna start talking a little bit more about what's called anabolic versus catabolic. So higher frequencies um, allowed bone volume to double in the research that you see here, and it was done at New York, and, and Alkanani has been uh, um, very active in, in researching this, at different hertz, right? So going from 30 to 100, the bone density changes. So what they're finding is now if we add this, this high frequency and we're adding force, can we then be able to create a different type of a mechanism where we can either increase or potentially decrease the density. So let's talk about that. If you're trying to put force on a tooth and you have bone that's the, the root is colliding against the bone, well, that potentially can ca cause a root resorption. So we're gonna need that bone to kind of be not as dense. We want it to be a little bit decreased in density, catabolic, versus in the anabolic state, if we remove the force and we're not putting force on the tooth, now what you've got is a nice dense bone that potentially if you're done with your tooth movement and creating this, this non-force and vibration for minimal times a day potentially can have the bone be a little bit more dense. And this research was, was very highly looked at as, is it possible to have these different types of forces? Put a force with vibration, creating tooth movement, less root resorption, and put no force, but continuing the vibration would make the bone more dense. So looking at this research, and having the pain reduction research that was also followed in, in, the, in the, some of the other uh, journals that was published. For us, as a dental clinician, it's a great finding because now I wanna make sure that what I'm delivering is actually effective. Is it actually working? So the conclusion of all of these different research showed, and, and some of them specifically with the VPRO, that they actually improve the accuracy, in reducing the aligner changes, meaning that you can now change it in three to five days um, rather than the seven to 14 days, which we know about. Definitely there's less pain or discomfort on teeth, as well as we are now seeing that the bone remodeling markers are apparent. So cytokine activity is apparent, right? So all these publications are allowed to, for, for me, to talk a little bit more about how I use the VPRO and MOPS concurrently. For instance, multidisciplinary applications of can I move teeth, place an implant, um, be able to do multiple dentistry at the same time? The answer is yes, because you know, first and foremost, we wanna stay on track. If the patient comes back and they have not worn their retainer, what are we gonna tell them? It's gonna be another $5,000 to do the treatment, well, it's gonna be another 2,000. When they bring back their retainer, they're like, it kind of fits, but it doesn't see it all the way. Well, as you can see um, uh, in, in the slide here with Dr. Shipley, a good friend of mine, uh, allowed me to kind of share this with you because from an orthodontic standpoint, if the tray doesn't fit, then you must, I hate to say the word acquit, but you must be able to charge the patient to put them back. 
What's very difficult, they take the final alignment that they gave that patient, he puts the V-Pro in five minutes a day and allows the aligners to, to seat. And once it seats, it moves the teeth in the position that he wanted to be, or the tray was supposed to be in. And this literally takes, and the patient continues to wear the same aligner to finally put teeth back in place. That's great because to me, I'm able to use the same methodology for my patients. So I did. So in my world, um, I, I said, hey, if you're doing it, I'm going to do it too. So I ended up using the vibration, high frequency, for patients to avoid them having relapse. Not just necessarily acceleration, but can I actually hold them in position as well as potentially maybe five minutes a night, they can now keep their liners in their mouth and keep the bone a little more dense. And if they don't, can I now use that to put the teeth back in where it was? And in, in what we title it as the um, really goals of going faster, I think I should have titled it as how to become more effective in delivering chase side aligners. Because whether you're, you're delivering it post or pre, I think that the vibration has room for our practice for these patients to have that machine for the rest of their life until it, either they drop it or break it down. Now, we talked about multidisciplinary. Okay, so what about talking about patients that are not going to do ortho? What about patients that are doing restorative? Where does that fit? Well, let me just pause that conversation and tell you about what happened in, in late 2017. The ADA passed and adopted a new policy about treating OSA, uh, obstructive sleep apnea. And those of you who know me know that I treat aligners and OSA as well as do restorative dentistry. Okay, fantastic. Can I combine everything together? Yeah, if a patient's got crooked teeth, then I want to straighten them. But if they want to not wear a CPAP, can I deliver a sleep appliance? Absolutely. I'll get to that. But first, let's talk about why this is significant, where the ADA says, as dentists, we are the only healthcare providers that have the knowledge and expertise to deliver and provide these types of appliances. So when you talk about oral appliance therapy, we're talking anything that goes in the mouth. Now, having said that, as you know, some of the ENTs may want to encroach in our space. Well, when a patient comes into my practice and I look at the patient and I look at this particular patient in a position where she's got a little bit of crowding, sorry, let's, um, and a little bit of a deep bite and patient's got tori, the first conversation is after the hygiene, after there's been no really caries noted, what else can I do for you? And this particular patient had complained about her TMJ to multiple offices. She came into our practice to do another consult. And I said, look, Susan, I, I believe your anterior teeth are hitting heavy. I understand that you have some TMD. There's some narrow arches that I see on the lower arch. Um, if we can maybe expand that out, maybe remove potentially the deep bite. And I need to kind of do a cone beam and take a look and see what you look like. But I, I believe that there is in uh, some sort of an issue here um, in the joints. And when we talked about this to her back in 2010, she absolutely positively did not want to do any orthodontics. She didn't want to do any clear line of treatments. And she's already had in her head what she said, multiple night guards um, that haven't helped her. Well, fast forward to eight years later. And so finally, she was able to make the decision to move forward with her her, her, treat, her treatment because she never she never got better um you know obviously the, the night guards never got better so we started her in early 17 seven years later rather and and by 18 we kind of uprighted the, the posterior arch and we were able to kind of give her a better treatment and at the same time what we noticed on the cone beam was that there was an airway issue and when she when you sleep at night your mandible falls back, blocks the airway, and creates this apneic event for her. And clinching and grinding your teeth, what we call nocturnal bruxism, is what really what was really hurting her. So what was really giving her a, an issue is that these patients that come in with these crowded, narrow arch, why are they getting these worn down teeth? Well, can we 
treat them. Absolutely, we can upright them, give them clear liner treatments. But if they say no, and we just give them a night guard, and if it's not the right kind, they end up not wearing it. Because if they don't wear the guard, and if it's the wrong guard, potentially they can wear down their teeth because they're not wearing it. And we now can't really assess them whether or not it was from bruxing, because when they lay back and the tongue blocks the airway, it's causing that bruxism, or is it because they have an airway issue? We don't know. But looking at Susan's case, doing the sleep study was a goal to have her do the clear liners and at the same time, the sleep appliance. Guess what, how our compliance was? Horrible. Her compliance was horrible. I had, to, I had to beg this person that, look, I can do this concurrently. You wear the sleep appliance at night, but I need you to wear these aligners 24 seven. And because her compliance was poor, we were able to then introduce to her the VPRO. And we told her, look, here's an option for you. What we want you to do is because you have an issue of grinding and clinching, and it seems as if at night the mandible blocks your airway, we can give you this vibration five minutes a day. A, it allows you to kind of relax the jaw, and it really did. She really said it relaxed my jaw a bit. And you can now make sure that the aligner tracking is continued, so that way your aligner doesn't stop tracking because you're not doing well in your compliance, as well as wearing the sleep appliance right over the aligner at night when you sleep. And I really want you to do this every night before you go to bed. And for her, it was a no-brainer because we had the sleep appliance called the aligner sleep appliance during the ortho clear aligner treatment. We gave her the V-Pro. She was able to um, wear the, you know, as I said, five minutes a day was easy for her. And now, what was the final result? Well, the result was as we started to widen the arch, as you saw earlier, we we she wears the sleep appliance at night. We don't have to bring the mandible too far forward like most sleep appliances do. And that created a much wider airway space for her. And we saw that her AHI, those of you who know about sleep, actually improved. But it was all about her just wearing a, a liner and using some sort of a, an appliance to hold the aligner in place and make sure it does it tracks well. And that was the VPRO in my office. And the high frequency uh, vibration allowed me to have a position, instead of giving her a bite position in the morning, where they have to bite into this piece of plastic to find their bite in the morning, because potentially some of these patients have their mandible shoved forward. Now it relaxes the, the tissues, the muscle, the bone, and I'm able to have this patient wear her so appliance. Tell me how you did. Sorry, she's actually giving the testimony. You may not be able to hear that. Um, she's actually wearing the appliance um, concurrently, and it was great for her with the VPRO. So looking at this, this, this case was actually published. Those of you who want to get no, more familiar about it, it was in the international journals, um, and we got improvements on the patient. Uh, again, a peer-reviewed, and your territory managers can, uh, uh, if you ask for them, they'll get the copy and you can read through it. But when I talk about multidisciplinary, and I start talking about the, the second passion of clear liners and then concurrently having the sleep appliance, as you see, we didn't have to shove the mandible too far forward, edge to edge was enough, and created enough airway where her AHI was reduced over 50%. To me, that is what's coming on the rise. So we're really expanding our dental practice, and we need tools to expand our dental practice. So what other methods can I uh, introduce to my patients? Well, number one, they all know about wearing down their teeth. And if you're going to do sleep, if you're going to do sleep treatments, if you're going to uh, use some sort of a appliance for the mandibular repositioning appliance, again, you, I go back to the morning positioner. You're going to have to use this piece of plastic for the patient to find their bite in the morning because the mandible has been shoved forward. By utilizing the VPRO, in the AM or PM, and it really depends on your methodology of appliance delivery. Normally, in my in my world, if I'm doing clear aligner treatment, I have them wear the um, aligners and the VPRO right over it. And in the morning, when they wake up, five minutes, and they go back putting their aligners in their mouth, bite's good, everyone's happy, and she's 
hasn't repositioned the mandible because I have a clear liner holding the teeth in place. So looking and expanding your practice, so tell me how the you sleep did, world hours sorry, in with your ends up being ASA in the whole. Um, well, I slept through the night, and I could tell. So I tell me how you did. I don't think I snored, although my husband wouldn't verify that this morning. And um, yeah, I mean, my yeah. She's, she's giving us a testimony. My, my bite definitely felt weird when I took them out, but I was glad I had that. So she's giving us a testimonial, and I don't know if you can hear it, but she was very excited that. After all these years, um, she finally was able to have a um, good night's sleep. And her husband said she doesn't snore, which is great. <laughs> She's excited about that. So when you start talking about um, sleep apnea and you're talking about teeth shifting, well, a lot of times patients come in and they actually have an oral appliance. So in my practice, because they, they know that I'm doing some clear liners and sleep, some of my patients say, oh yeah, I have an oral appliance or can, can you adjust it for me? Well, in this particular case, I'm gonna introduce you to Bob and he had come in and what happened with Bob was that he actually had uh, an oral appliance that I had delivered for him. And this was done in about, oh, let's see, let's take a look here. So it was in 2012 that I had given oral appliance, no aligner treatment, just a simple oral appliance. And what I noticed on him was five years later, he went away, he actually moved out of town, came back. And when we saw him almost uh, five, six years later, uh, we saw that he had a posterior open bite on the molars and the anterior teeth started crowding. And that's not the way his teeth were when we got started. And I asked Bob, I says, well, are you wearing your appliance? He says, every night, I'm excited, thank you. But the reality was, when you're wearing a sleep appliance, and if you're bruxing and clenching, and potentially you can get unwanted shifting of teeth, and that's one of the byproducts of sleep appliances. So my problem was, how do I put this back together again? Well, I went ahead and did another uh, uh, workup. I said, look, we've got to do some clear aligners. And a year later, if you look at 2016, where we saw him with the posterior teeth opened with a lower, lower anterior crowding. He didn't really want to accept uh, the treatment. He wasn't sure if he's going to be compliant with clear aligners. And he waited a year. And guess what? He kept wearing his sleeve appliance. And look what the bite looked like a year later. Uh, tooth number two and three on the upper molars um, in the ortho world, uh, was a six and sevens, opened up even more. Anterior teeth became edge to edge bite now. He grew a beard <laughs> in the process. And I said, look, Bob, we got to do something about this. He said, I don't think I'm going to be compliant. I don't think I'm going to, I'm going to wear it. I don't know if I'm going to wear the clear liner all the time. So we introduced the high frequency. He said, look, um, I really like to do mops. Um, he didn't really want to go for that. And we ended up using the high frequency in combination with his treatment. We were able to put the sleep appliance at night. As you see here, he was wearing it at night so he, he can get his rest at night. Um, the sleep appliance itself has some adjustable uh, processes uh, built in. So that way, as your aligner is moving, the actual sleep appliance moves with the aligner. And the patient then, uh, just five minutes a night, was performing the V-Pro on himself before going to bed in the morning. And you can clearly see that pre and post, this is with the uh, aligner sleep appliance in his mouth, we were able to get the airway and much better sleep for him but what was most important to me was that this patient ended up getting the bite closed and we're finally going towards the right route in resolving the, the, the problem that happened with the sleep appliance only. So why I'm a big fan of the actual high frequency in the VPRO is because it allows me to do cases where now I can actually, for just five minutes a day, I can prevent the long-term teeth shifting and gain a little bit of a bone density that I see in my uh, cone beam. And I know some of you doctors might wonder, well, it's just really seating the aligner better. True, it helps a lot, seat the aligner better. But as I said before, does it actually help in the biochemistry of the bone? That's where the debate has always been. And in my world, as I see these patients and, and the publications of peer reviews that they look, and I see myself in a position where I believe that there is room for the high frequency 
uh, velocity in my practice, there is room for me to kind of utilize it in multidisciplinary uh, facets in my practice. And those of you who are doing clear aligners only and say, you know what, I may not want to do sleep. Okay, no problem. Because the latest uh, uh, dental journal shows that 52% of us as general practitioners are actually providing some sort of an orthodontic treatment anyway. So, you know, 33% are aligners only. And the rest of you are doing maybe combo. 12% are doing com combo uh, brackets and aligners. 7% of us are doing still brackets only. But the reality is, as of May of 2018, there are 52% of us that are utilizing some sort of a clear liner or wire brackets to move teeth. And I believe that there is room to add this um, as an auxiliary to our practice. Now, the high frequency, the benefits, obviously we know that there's pain reduced. I've seen that um, as far as refinements or additional aligners and the tracking uh, has been a lot better. You know, getting those long root canines, um, you know, maybe making the mop initially and continuing with the V-Pro, it helps a lot better with the uh, patients as well as the bone remodeling, I believe is increasing and the density is actually increasing as well. So when you start to look into the um, patients that we have now gotten to know, and when I look at some of these cases and I look at their, their, their treatment, what more can I do? Well, let's pause and let's go back to the idea of what I talked about earlier. If your teeth are in a good proper position, stabilized position, fantastic. Let's keep them in that position. But if you're planning on moving them and you want to make sure that they're stable, and if you're combining it with the sleep, as I said earlier, what better than to have that clear liner, hold teeth in place, make sure that that patient is using the V-Pro, and then they put any other appliance over it or concurrent treatment. Coming back to the... Um, science of it, again, I believe that these patients can benefit a great deal from having these um, teeth not be shifted and looking at the bone density level of it, will it help in, in long term? And my answer is yes, it will. And will it help on cases like you saw earlier with the implant? Well, you know, let's talk about the implant cases, right? Because you know, we, we talked a little bit briefly about uh, where the perforation happened. And if you look at this case where the actual perforation, we, we if you look on the number 22 and number 21 and number 20, by cuspid and cuspid there, I was not brave enough to actually create any mops on the distal. I was worried. And after I placed the implant, I noticed that the tissue is a lot pink. It looks a lot better than the way the patient started. And am I getting better tissue? The answer is 100% better tissue, 100% better bone. And now I have a stable bite. Can I now continue this with the V-Pro in the evenings? And so now uh, it said three-year follow-up, but it's actually been six years now where my patient uh, she's on her second uh, V-Pro. The first one you know, was the was the first generation. Now she's on her second generation of use. And she says, yeah, I just use this five minutes a day. I love it. Pop my trays on. I'm all good. And that's what I believe is a really puts the office in a different category in, con in conversing with these patients. So you can actually track these patients as well. Um, you know, if the patients, you know, there's a mobile compliance app that, these patients are using it. You can actually utilize it in your practice. And sometimes once every two or three months, my assistants kind of send a little um, reminder, hey, we haven't seen your, 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 you know, we haven't seen you do your VPRO. We haven't seen any movement, what's going on. There's a compliance. So we can actually monitor the patient's uh, compliance um, for the patients that are either traveling or they, they kind of come in every 12 or 10 weeks or so. So what I like to do now is kind of go through and talk a little bit about, and I know some of you have been posting some questions and um, 
you know, kind of uh, uh, asking. Uh, I know that uh, in Bob's case, I think uh, Dr. Levine asked in Bob's case, how did you, how did the high frequency correct the open bite that developed? Oh, fantastic. Okay. So let's go back to Bob's case, Dr. Levine. And I'll, um, I want to make sure that I take the questions as we, as we get them. So in Bob's case, and I will go here real quick. We will, let me give you Bob's case. So when Bob's case got started, um, and that's, this is when we actually started him. So the question is, in Bob's case, how did the high frequency um, vibration correct the open bite that developed with his sleep device when he continued wearing the same device? So the answer is, we actually switched the sleep device. So if you look and see his initial sleep appliance, um, which was a regular dorsal appliance type. And if you see this appliance, the patients and what I believe happens to these patients because they clinch and grind and sometimes shifting happens, whether it's from the ball clasp, but there is the mandible is positioned forward. And in his case, if you look, his mandible wasn't positioned too far forward, but if you look from a profile view, he was about three millimeters um, forward. And that was enough to cause a little bit of um, opening in his um, open bite. So we were then, at that point, I decided I'm going to do clear line of treatment, which he was not really sold on. And a year prior to me starting, this is what he looked like. He wasn't quite sold on the idea of him being compliant. So we had to switch the sleep appliance from dorsal to what's called the aligner sleep appliance. And by using the clear aligners to bring down those posterior teeth and put them into occlusion, bringing the lower teeth, or I had to add a little IPR. And next time I'll remember to load the actual treatment plan for you. I did a 0.1 IPR on the lower arch, lower cuspid to cuspid, and the upper arch on tooth number two and three, where the six and sevens are on the upper right. I was bringing that down. Using the high frequency, it allowed the aligner to track because sometimes the aligners show expansions or show rotations. And unfortunately, the plastic gives, the plastic is not strong enough to move the teeth. So the um, Repro allowed the pl plastic to track better, as well as now when my sleep appliance is retrofitted, if you see those expander screws, I can use those to tighten or I can expand. In this, in his particular case, I was able to, as the tray is coming in, it's lingualizing, if you will, the upper tooth number two and three, those expander screws are in reverse and they allow the aligner to continue its movement and allow the tracking with the V-Pro. So that's why we were able to get him in a much better position, but most importantly, given him that airway that he needs at night when he sleeps and putting his teeth back because the high frequency allowed the teeth to move into a better position. Um, so we had to remake a new sleep appliance, which was great because in my world, uh, it was billable to the medical insurance. So once every three years, I, I, I was allowed to, to bill. It's almost in the 7,000 pricing. Those of you who don't know, you, you should. Um, and I was able to get this um, uh, adjustable sleep appliance called the ASA um, for billing the medical and getting paid while he's doing combo treatment. So it is a, is a great product to have, but without the V-Pro, I don't think I would have been able to put his teeth in that better position. Um, so I hope that answers your question. And as you can see, there are adjustable uh, palatal and lingual. So if you're planning on expanding or if you're planning on kind of doing the reverse, you're able to do that um, concurrently while you're moving the plastic. So the V-Pro helps uh, tracking a lot better. I hope that answered um, your question. So uh, as far as one more. Okay, so the other question we have is in regards to the actual science which we put up was the anabolic and catabolic. So let's talk about this. So the, the, the research that was done, and I'll kind of show you what the, uh, they call the paradox high frequency um, uh, vibration in the catabolic means that if you are continuing force, so the inflammatory 
process is activated, meaning that now we are planning on moving teeth. So there's a force added, maybe an aligner force of 0.25, maybe the wire and brackets, nine tie. So when that force is given to the actual teeth and now distributed to the bone, and now you add the high frequency to it, maybe right on top of the aligner, or maybe you have a wire and bracket and the patient's biting down with wire and bracket, you're now creating that inflammatory, if you will, baseline. And that continuous force allows you to have this catabol catabolic effect, which means that you have osteoclastic decreased density. So you're able to move bone, move teeth and bone. That's like jello, if you will. Again, I'm just I'm using that as an example, right? Versus if you are done with your tooth movements, you're not adding force, you're just doing the VPRO. What this research shows is that the osteoblastic activity are increased. So now you're getting more of an osteoblastic, more of a dense bone. And you're able to kind of hold those teeth from relapsing potentially, hold those teeth from um, shifting back or the, or the PDLs uh, get a lot uh, better. And so that's what the anabolic and the catabolic um, uh, conversation is of, is there force added while you're doing the VPRO or is there no force uh, added uh, to this? So I hope that answers that question. And again, if you have questions, you can simply just type it in. I get to see it and we'll, uh, I'll keep at, uh, answering them as I, as I go through the um, slides. So, okay, one more question. Okay, so the next question, let me go back to my slides here, was about the ADA. So the ADA did not pass, the question is, did the ADA pass this rule? Okay, so the ADA adopted a policy in the dentist's role because there was a lot of conversation about can dentists treat sleep apnea? Can they not? It was kind of like, can dentists uh, deliver clear aligners? Are they doing orthodontics or not? And this conversation kept going on and on of whether or not these dentists are allowed to deliver sleep appliances or are they allowed to maybe do uh, sleep studies? So the answer is no, dentists are not allowed to do or, or interpret sleep studies. And in some states, you actually have to have a physician that allows you to sign off for a sleep study. Um, for instance, I know that the, in some of the East Coast states, and I know Texas had a lot of some of these rulings, I use a, a company that does that for me, a third party that does that for me. They do the sleep studies, they do all the patient insurance billing and all that. My job is to deliver the, what you saw here, OAT, which is the treatment of appliances. So oral appliance therapy is what the OAT stands for. And that is what my job is. And I'm, I'm fully capable of doing that. So vibration is an oral appliance therapy. Clear liners are oral appliance therapy. Sleep appliances are oral appliance therapy. Now, how do I make it effective? How do I make it, you know, the efficacy of, of these? You have to do follow-up sleep testing. And there's a whole protocol that you need to do for these patients. But at least those of you who are at least delivering these oral appliance therapies, you have a tool now that'll help you um, track the patient and make sure that these patients are staying, uh, if you will, uh, uh, in the, that same bite position. Because I do believe shifting happens unless if you stimulate the tooth and bone. I've seen it. Again, again, I just showed you a couple of the uh, studies that, that I personally did in my office and the publications that I sent out with peer-reviewed. And I believe that there is room for this product to add to my practice to help at least teeth not shift um, if I'm not adding force. If I add force to it, then yes, that creates the, the bone density that we talked about and the inflammatory process to move the teeth, okay? So I'm looking at the uh, continuous conversation about implementation. How do I implement this um, and what's the, the, the cost? So in my practice, when I start to talk to these patients and I wanna kind of have the conversation with them about the um, long-term versus short-term, I usually add this as part of my treatment. I don't make it a sub line of extra expense of you know, an extra $500 or an extra $400 or an extra $300. It's just part of my orthodontic or my sleep treatment. 
if I'm doing implant therapy, if I'm doing any of these other therapies, it's again, just like how you do bone graft or membrane, depending on the type of grafting you're doing, um, it is just part of my package. So I put in this uh, as part of my expense uh, for these patients. So all my clear aligner therapy kind of comes with this, um, you know, whether I'm mops or I'm adding this as a follow-up, or in some cases, I don't need the mops. I only need the high frequency. Um, I, I always have this as part of my additional uh, processes. So I kind of recommend the, um, you know, being able to use this as not a line item because then the patients say, well, I don't need it. Right, but do you think your teeth are gonna come back to this position where they were? Do you think that your retention, you're gonna be compliant? When they put that five minutes with the aligner in their mouth and they do this five minutes, trust me that they'll keep the aligner in their mouth. So, you know, um, I believe that this is a product that, that should not be a separate line item. Miriam is asking me a question. Do you recommend using uh, finding third party for medical billing, the sleep appliance there? Yeah, I totally recommend using a third party. I tried doing the medical billing on my own and I gave that idea up very quickly. It was, uh, it took me about a year and a half to get paid on something that I uh, didn't quite, uh, I, I, I was so upset. I didn't, I didn't collect as much as I should have from the patient. My sleep therapy is anywhere between six to $7,000. Um, it's for treatment, 24 months, billable to the insurance up to 11,000. Proper company that knows how to do billing, they know how to do that right. I use the aligner sleep appliance almost every time when I'm uh, using clear aligners for sleep. So you, all of these are designed by, um, you know, this combo treatment. A billing company knows how to do that better than having you do it on your own. It's just very difficult and very cumbersome to sit 45 minutes. And my, by the way, my front office hated it uh, sitting there doing medical verification. Try to do, uh, already we have a hard time with dental verification. Try to add the medical verification. So Miriam, 100%, I would recommend third party. I myself use a, a, a different company. Like I said, the Alignus Sleep Alliance, I use a different company named Sleep Architects. They're the ones who are actually doing my portion of the billing and treatment planning, everything else, just like how you see on your software with your clear aligners. You're not gonna go create your own clear aligners, even though we can these days. We can print our own aligners. I'm still not a fan of doing it myself. I'd rather have a third party do it. Okay, uh, wow, got a lot of questions. <laughs> All right, so I've got one from Rebecca. Uh, how do you use the VPRO as a preventative in the morning for someone who has oral sleep appliance, but no Invisalign? Do you have to use the tray to cover the Oh, great question. All right. So the question is, how do I use the VPRO for, as, a, as let's say we talked about the morning positioner, and let me go back to that morning positioner where a lot of times when these patients tend to do sleep appliances, and they, their teeth kind of shift. They have to bite down on this plastic piece that you might have maybe boil and bite and make sure that their bite is um, in position. So those patients who do not use clear aligner treatments and use sleep appliance only, like you saw in Bob's case, they sometimes have to use this bite position that you see on the bottom, this plastic bite position. The problem with this bite positioner is A, a lot of times patients tend to lose it, and B, if you look even on this bite positioner, where the patient bit down, it's a little different when the bite positioner is kind of heated than when it isn't and when they bite down. So for them, they lose their bite in the morning if their jaw's been forward the whole night. So right now, as I'm speaking to you, have all of you just bring your jaw forward, edge to edge, and just, just picture yourself sleeping like that with an appliance in your mouth all the way to morning time. When you take the oral appliance out, you can't find your bite. You can't put your bite back where the lower arch fits the upper arch. So the VPRO allows the patients, in what I've seen, kind of help with that muscle relaxation so then they can go find their bite. My recommendation, uh, Rebecca, is yeah, I really believe that a clear aligner over the teeth and a sleep appliance over that is a much better plant treatment plan, meaning that you can use a sleep appliance like the ASA, but not move teeth. You can just simply you make a, a, a Vivera or a clear aligner as a retention and have that in the patient's mouth so then we don't have to worry about their teeth shifting, as you see in, in, in Bob's case. 
Um, and the clear aligner then acts as a belt. And the V-Pro then, as the V-Pro's vibrating the clear aligner and teeth that are in position, the patient's bite won't get lost because now simply said, they've got the little belt around their teeth, which is a plastic aligner. And now the sleep appliance does its job by advancing the mandible forward or, you know, you don't necessarily have to have active movement to use the sleep appliance or at least this ASA. You can just have passive or retentive aligners because once you're done with the movements of this uh, sleep appliance, you still can use that for your final retention because all you need is the clear liner because as you see, there's no coverage on the anterior of the teeth. So you're only covering it from bicuspid to molar uh, in most instances. So yes, I do recommend using the V-Pro and I do recommend covering the teeth with clear aligners and the sleep appliance. Um, again, the company I use modifies these so that the expanders are out once the patient's done with their aligner treatment or if you decide to do a modified version, they can do that for you. So uh, the V-Pro has really helped in that process for me so that I don't have to worry about uh, potential teeth shifting, um, or I haven't yet, and I've seen it. I've been doing this now for about seven years now, um, and the V-Pro has been introduced in the past four and a half years in my practice. Um, so I hope that kind of helps with the question. All right, I know we have about four minutes, so I'm going to answer one final question, if you have it, uh, before we go, and I hope you got something out of it. I know uh, that to me, I always like to make it short and sweet. Um, I will put my information uh, here. Uh, if you have additional questions, you can email me directly. There are five questions you're supposed to be answering um, to get your CE. Very simple questions that were reviewed that you can answer and get your CE afterwards. And if you have any other information that you may need, uh, just email me at doctor at atai.com. Uh, I do have a site, ataii.com. You can go on that site. And there, I have a lot of the publications that you saw already there. You can just download the publications and read them or ask your territory uh, manager from the Propel side of the house to show you the publications and help you with any other questions that I may not have answered. Okay, with that said, I hope you have a great rest of the evening. I know there was, uh, uh, we had about uh, uh, over 100 uh, uh, attendees, it looks like, and I know 44 of you were engaged. I really appreciate your time. So if you have no more questions, I will then close up the evening and have a good night.